Ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Eddie Matthews. He is ready to get some revenge for last week's heartbreaking loss in the ninth inning. This time, he is going to put an end to all the losses ever created. And we are only going to win from this point forward. And Eddie Matthews is going to be the man to put the team on his back. That is right, today is episode 11 of Eddie's Asylum. And before I get into talking about the team today, I just want to say next week I will be taking a break from Eddie's Asylum. Next Sunday obviously being Super Bowl Sunday, and normally I post these at 7 p.m. Central, which is at the same time that the Super Bowl is going to be happening. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely do not want to be watching YouTube during the Super Bowl, and I kind of assumed you guys would be the same way. So I have a little bit of something different planned for next week week on Super Bowl Sunday with a special guest so I'm thinking you guys are probably going to enjoy what I have planned but then in two weeks we'll be back with episode 12 so don't worry the series is not going away I'm just taking a little bit of a break if you are new to the series the rules for the series are going to be on screen how each player can get upgraded and how they can get downgraded as well as the tiers you go to if you've been upgraded or downgraded so let's take a look at the new team that we got with all the upgrades and downgrades from last game last game was probably Probably our most successful game that we've ever played in this Eddie's Asylum series. The entire lineup is tier 2, the entire starting rotation is tier 2, and the entire bullpen with the exception of Devin Williams is tier 2. So starting in left field, Adam Dunn got himself upgraded last game, so we're going to tier 3, the 93 home run derby Garrett Anderson. This guy last year, his 95 signature card had one of my favorite swings to use the entire year, and I haven't had too much of a chance to use this 93 this year, but I am looking forward to using him today in this Eddie's Asylum series. He has amazing power for a 93 to go along with a really good swing. I am really excited to use him. In center field, we're going from the 86 Joey Gallo to the 89. Nothing really much to say here. Just a better version of Joey Gallo with that same glitchy swing. Better power, better contact, better fielding. Just better everything, pretty much. And in right field, if you guys have uh, been around the MLB community, you know there's that account that is named Corey Dickerson, and he was begging me to use Corey Dickerson in this series. So well, obviously Corey Dickerson doesn't have a good card or get enough card to be used in this series, but I'm going to be using the 95 Corey Dickerson. I've used his silver in BR. I think he has a decent swing, and this one has 125 power versus righties. And then at first base, we've got Stan the Man Musial. I'm hoping that eventually we can have Vladimir Guerrero in right field and Stan Stan at first base so that we can maybe have a you don't walk Stan for Vlad situation going on. You don't walk Stan for Vlad! But for now, Stan is the only one we have. We are back at a 99 for the first base tier. And remember, if a 99 gets upgraded, they lock in the 99 overall tier for the rest of the series. Hopefully, Stan can be that guy to do that for us. At second base, Matt Carpenter is staying from last video. And at shortstop, Hanley Ramirez is back. I think he was here in episodes 2 through 5 and then fell off after episode 5. And now we're finally back at tier 2 at shortstop. Hopefully, Hanley can continue to mash the ball like he was doing. Then behind the plate, Asmati Grandal are going to stay from last video. And then we get to the starting rotation where we use the other two of our upgrades from winning the game to upgrade to the 92 Max Freed from the 88 Shohei Otani. So now our entire rotation is tier two or above, as I mentioned earlier. And then we're going from the 93 Bruce Dark Rateral to the 98 overall Oral Hershiser. This guy might be the best non-99 starting pitcher in the game. I have struggled a little bit with him. He is kind of hit or miss because he does throw so slowly, but against some players, he is really dominant. And in the bullpen, we had one final upgrade. We're going from the 96 Garrett Crochet to the 99 Andrew Miller. I absolutely despise this card. He has a 14-14 ERA and a 2-14 whip, but he is the only 99 overall left to have. I know there is Josh Hader and Billy Wagner. I'm never getting Billy Wagner because I'm never going 12-0, and Josh Hader, I'll get him whenever we get another lefty up to that 99 overall tier. And then Rob Nen, who was a tier 2, did get downgraded in last video, so we're going to be replacing him with the 86 Devin Williams. This card is pretty good. He has a cutter and a sinker, and I think a lot of people do like his 99, so hopefully his 86 can get the job done for us today. But yeah, that is going to be the team for this next episode of Eddie's Asylum, episode 11. Let's get it going. We are going to be facing the 97 Vita Blue in today's video. That's exciting. Vita is one of the legends of Kevin G.O.D. I have him on 
this team. So hopefully we can light up the 97 Vita, but I, if not, I won't be too mad because it is Vita. This guy's got a good team, but it's not great. He has a couple of interesting choices, and uh, he is playing at Griffith Stadium. So that is going to be a whole lot of fun, but luckily his record is pretty bad. Oh my goodness, I am absolutely struggling to hit Vita. This is this is a pathetic display of human being that you are seeing right now. Vita is just tying me up in a pretzel. Trey Turner hits it the other way, and that's going to get into the gap. That is a wide, wide gap, and Joey Gallo misplays it, so he's going to have a triple. That is 438 to the gap. He's trying to go for home. Nah, he's going to stay at third. Two out triple for Trey Turner. And a changeup in the dirt. We should be having him at first base if Grandola throws the ball and we get out of the inning with no runs allowed. That's Monty back up the middle. Get down ball. There's a base hit. First of the ball game. Garrett Anderson! Perfect, perfect, no doubt bomb out of the stadium. That ball was absolutely crushed. I need a distance, come on. Garrett Anderson, that was a massive bomb. I told you guys, this guy is so good. 439, lefty lefty for Mr. GA. Joey Gallo, that ball is crushed. Get in that corner. Come on, go ball. Oh my gosh, that this guy playing in this ballpark just absolutely robbed us of a Joey Gallo bomb. Good curveball in the dirt, and Blake Snell is going to set him down. One, two, three, and strike out the side. Alex Dickerson, that ball is crushed. That is not getting caught. Absolutely not. It's off the wall. Oh, you better run, Dickerson. You better get in there. That's going to be a double off the wall for Alex Dickerson. Hanley shoots it through the corner. Cat. Oh, my gosh. That is a really tough line out. Ball four is going to walk Eddie on the two seam where that ball was nowhere close. Got two men on for Stan. Oh, no, that changeup was hanging right there, and I got it in my center PCI, but Stan is just going to pop it up on the infield. We miss a scoring opportunity, but we still got a 2 to nothing lead. That slider hung, and Dawson is going to go deep. Dude, Dawson absolutely kills me every single time I face him. I don't know what it is, but Andre Dawson, oh, okay, this guy is replaying it, apparently. Uh, yeah, that ball just got over the fence, buddy. I, I don't know that that's really all that impressive, but go ahead and replay it if you're down and you want to try and think that you're so cool. I mean, I don't really see anything wrong with that because I'm going to beat you anyways. All right, what's up, guys? It is uh, Underdog here in the editing studio, and I apologize. I sound different because the audio got messed up for the second half of the game. I'm not really sure what was going on, but there was something like it was glitching, and part of it was going faster than it was supposed to, and then slower, and it wasn't synced up with the gameplay. So I'm going to be voicing over for most of the rest of this game as Gary Anderson is going to strike out there in the fourth. Justin Turner is going to ground out routinely to Matt Carpenter. So back-to-back -back one, two, three innings for both me and my opponent there. Alex Dickerson hits to the hang curveball, but it is going to be caught. We were just a little bit out in front on that one. Two outs in the fifth here. Buster Posey is going to line that one through the 3.5 hole with two outs to extend the inning here. But the pitcher spot is due up next Vita Blue here. So hopefully we can strike him out here. And yes, we do on the changeup in the dirt. The two out single does not cause any harm to us. Stan Musial, can he get his first hit of the ball game? No, he cannot. The first baseman makes a nice diving play to keep it on the infield and rob Stan of a hit there. Trey Turner is going to line that to left field for his second base hit of the ball game. It's another two out knock for him. And then the very next pitch, he is going to take off with Trey Turner. And there is just no way I'm hosing him. That's 99 speed running the bases. But Hannes Wagner is going to fly that in the air to center field. Joey Gallo should have this. Yes, he does. And we're going to get out of this inning unscathed. Still with a lead. And Garrett Anderson, I don't know what I'm doing. That was a stupid decision to swing. And now we have gone four consecutive innings without a base hit. So that's pretty pathetic. But Blake Snell, luckily, is keeping us in this game. He is having a masterful pitching performance. Seven innings, one run allowed, 16 strikeouts. Can the offense finally wake up? Yes, it can. 
Joey Gallo with a perfect, perfect the other way into that really weird corner, and it's like 405 to left field. That is one of the strangest ballparks you'll ever see. That is going to turn into a triple for Joey Gallo to lead off the inning. We're going to bring in Mark Canna here, and a perfect, perfect through the hole to drive in a huge insurance run. Now the lead is stretched to two. It is three to one here. Big clutch hit by Mark Canna. That card is just so good. Hanley Ramirez looking for his first hit, and he's going to line out to third base right there. That is the second time in the ball game that Hanley Ramirez has hit the ball on the screws for a line out, and he's 0 for today. And Eddie Matthews crushes that. That is also going to be a line out. So a little bit of a rough eighth inning there, but it's fine because we did get a run. Pat Neshek. Coming into the game here, he is going to strike out Buster Posey on a changeup in the dirt and strike out Tatis on a sinker up and in and strike out Andre Dawson on another changeup in the dirt, masterfully pitched by Pat Neshek as Stan Musial looks for his first hit of the ball game and he's going to pop up the fastball on the infield. So another 99 first baseman is going to get downgraded. That is looking pretty unfortunate as the 99s at first base can't really seem to get anything done and Matt Carpenter is also going to go 0 for today as he flies out there to center field for second out of the inning. Unfortunate as it looks like at this point we have three downgrades on offense and Yasmani's going to strike out there to end the ninth inning so we got to shut him down or at least give up one or fewer runs. Tyler Alexander coming into the game and he's going to fly out first pitch to center field to Joey Gallo. One out here. Let's see if we can get the second out here. Randy Arosa ran a slider on the back foot. He's going to hit it on the ground, but that is just going to go right back up the middle. And Matt Carpenter cannot make a play on it. That is a late hit that was almost hitting him in the foot, and he somehow is able to get a cheesy hit on it. Luckily, Hannes Wagner is going to fly out there to right field. Two down, we're one out away, but he also does have the tying run on base. Justin Turner is going to hit it on the ground to shortstop. Hanley Ramirez makes the play, and the ball game is over. We take the win, 3-1, to one, and I'll see you guys back in the lobby to break down the upgrades and downgrades. All right, let's take a look at the upgrades and downgrades from today's game. Garrett Anderson had a two-run bomb, which means he is going to get upgraded, and left field will be a Tier 4, the second Tier 4, along with first base, which we'll get to later. In center field, Gallo had a triple, so he's staying with the team. Alex Dick and had a double and he is staying. Stan Musio went over. That's a downgrade. Carpenter's getting downgraded and Hanley Ramirez is also getting downgraded. In a pitching staff, Blake Snell is going to definitely get an upgrade. He had a really strong outing. Seven innings, 16 strikeouts, just one earned run allowed. So we're going to have a tier four starting pitcher, the second of the team, along with Oral Hershiser. And then in the bullpen, we have upgrades to Pat Neshek and Tyler Alexander. Tier four relievers will be in for them as well. And and we are going to have an upgrade to the position of our choice from winning the game. So that's going to be pretty nice. So all in all, a pretty successful game. A net total of five upgrades and three downgrades to the team. So even though we won, it wasn't the best of games. Our offense did struggle a little bit today against Vita Blue, which is a little bit ironic because as I've been mentioning, Vita is one of the legends of this series. But hopefully next time we pitch with Vita, he can be just as dominant. But that's going to wrap up everything that I need to talk about about today. I hope you guys enjoy this and I will see you in two weeks for episode 12.